Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. You know, in this lockdown, some have made so much money legitimately, not even scamming, legitimately. Some have made money and some have not made money. But your life won't even be regulated and your profit and your target will not be affected by the coronavirus. Meaning, your target for this year, whether there's a COVID-19 or not, will be met. That's what he's saying, if you trust God. Why? God can navigate the COVID-19 and still actualize your target, whether in business, whether in family, whether in your career, in whatever it is, I've seen people promoted under suspension. I've seen strange things. I've seen people promoted at the time it wasn't the time for promotion. God can navigate. He says promotion comes from the north. It doesn't come from man. I've seen people achieve things outside the normal settings of man that is regulated for man to operate on. And God says, those things don't hinder me. I can navigate through them and get you to that expected end. So what we're saying in a nutshell, for those of you who trust God, all your targets, all your aspirations for the year 2020, you will surpass them. Say, but I've not been working. You may not work the work you are trained to do. God will bring a work you may not be trained to do, but he will meet that target and it will be legitimate in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. That's one of the things that come through trusting God. But we'll look at what it means to trust God if time will permit us. Amen. I want to give another reason of why you must trust God. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Now, this is a character trait of God. You know, the Bible says in 1 John, so whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And the Bible says in Psalm 138, verse 2, said, I worship towards thy holy temple, for thou hast exalted thy word above all thy names. Meaning, God submits to his word. Um, if God submits to his word, meaning, if God says whoever hates his brother is a murderer, meaning God must not hate anyone, because if he hates anyone, he's a murderer. And the Bible says, whoever is a murderer, eternal life does not abide in that person. Now, the Bible says, this is that they, in John 17, Jesus was praying, he said, Father, that they may know thee, the only true God, the eternal God. He said, this is life eternal, knowing God. So God is eternal life. Now, meaning God hates no one. But you may read the scripture in Romans, it says, Jacob I have loved, Esau, I have hated. No, God never hated Esau. He's giving you a prototype of what he hates. He hates profane people who value natural things above spiritual things. Esau valued natural things more than spiritual things. To him, natural things was more important than the spiritual. And God hates that attitude. He hates that nature. But he never hated Esau. He doesn't hate anything. Why I'm saying this is because the word works and God is submissive to his word. And so if God says something, it's applicable to him too. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, it says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which began a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Meaning, anything God starts in your life, no matter how small, he will see to it that it comes to an end. He will never, ever leave it halfway. When he called Abraham and said, Abraham, leave your father's house and your mother's house and I will show you to a land. There's land flowing with milk and honey that is not yours. The moment Abraham left his father's house, God was committed to making sure Abraham got to the end of that journey. That is God. Now, in the book of Corinthians, it says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, he shall reap. 
God is not mocked. In the book of Luke, it says, which of you, having a building, you start a work, and you find out you cannot finish it, and then people begin to mock you. So one of the ways a person can be mocked is that he starts what he cannot finish. Now, God is saying in the book of Luke, if you, start, if you want to start a project, make an assessment that you can finish it. Lest you go halfway, you cannot finish it, and people begin to mock you. Meaning, starting a work and not finish it will bring mockery. And the Bible says, God is not mocked. Meaning, whatsoever he has started in your life, even if you started it as a seed, it will finish well. Trust him for that. He's committed to completing. That's why you must trust him. Except he didn't start it. Say, but I just sold what he told me to sow. That's enough. He has started it. He has started the work. And he started it through your seed. The moment he has received that seed, he has started that work. I said he will be mocked. Then he will abandon you halfway. But God cannot be mocked. That means those projects that have begun in your life, they will finish well. I prophesy to everyone across that has projects. If it's a child you are carrying in your womb, I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ, you will deliver that child well. When you deliver, you will be alive your child will be alive in the name of Jesus. I can't guarantee if you went to a herbalist to get that child. But if it is God that gave you that child, if you have suffered miscarriages before, this time around, you will end with great joy in the name of Jesus. Oh, it's a project that God inspired me to go and apply for. And I sold. It has been suspended because of coronavirus. This year, that project will end well in your favor. It will end well for your profit in the name of Jesus. Oh, it's a health issue and it seems to be going worse and worse. But when it started, God told me to do this and I did it. It may go bad and worse. I assure you it will turn around again and it will end where God will be glorified in your life. Every good thing that has started in your life that God was involved in it, I pray and I prophesy, it will end well in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So one of the reasons why you must trust God is because whatever he starts or he's involved in, he finishes. And not just finishes, he finishes it well. Amen. And I'll give you just one more reason while um, while you must trust God. And to buttress even the former point, I'll go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. And it says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for his faithful that promised. Let me recount in the scripture in Mark chapter 5, a Jairus by name, Mark, Mark 5 or Mark 4, I'm not exactly sure, came to meet Jesus and said, his daughter, and I believe this is a word for someone, is grievously sick, and ask the Lord, come and lay your hands on her, and she shall live. At the time he met with the Lord, his daughter was only sick, but still alive. And the Lord said, let us go. Meaning, the Lord has begun that procedure with Jarius. While on the way, they met a crowd. A woman came behind the press. They call her the woman with the issue of blood. Touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And Jesus had to stop the procession. He said, somebody touch me. And I know Jairus would have been saying, look, Lord, in his heart, time is going. I saw the way, I knew the way I left this girl. She probably is panting now. Let's hurry up. 
The Lord is taking his time. And it looks like the Lord is taking his time in many people's life. And in that scenario, Jesus insisted, somebody touched him. And they said, Lord, there's so many. Then the woman came out. And the Bible says she told him the whole story. I guess she told him the story from the time she started the ailment. I don't know how long that story must have taken. Probably an hour. She's a woman. I don't think she would just start the story. I was sick. Three days, that was about 16 years. 16 years ago, she was saying, Bible says she suffered from many hands. So it's possible she was even narrating the people that duped her. Lord Jesus, it was um, 18 years ago this problem started. First, I remember even my former husband, he did this, he left me because of this issue. I met one man. He said it was this, and the Lord was patient. Jairus was not patient. Oh, Lord, this woman is here. Let's keep moving. The Lord didn't move. He was hearing. It looks delayed. He was hearing the woman. And when he finished with the woman, probably three hours, he told the woman, thy faith has saved the go in peace. Now, after wasting some more time, people now came and said, Jarius, don't trouble the man again. Your daughter is dead. And the Lord turned and said, Jarius, I have not opted out of this journey with you. Where together we started, we will end together. That's the Lord I'm talking about. That you can't give up even if the case gets worse. You can't give up. Jarius wanted to give up. And the Lord said, don't give up, Jarius. I only stopped to address something else. But in my mind, I have not given up on the journey we started. Whatever he starts, he will finish. Jarius, let's continue. I guess Jarius was discouraged and believed there was no need for the Lord to continue. He said, no, let us continue. He got to Jairus' house and raised Jairus' daughter back to life. Don't give up. It's gotten worse. Don't give up. It's getting worse, but it don't give up. The Lord has not given up on you. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. Finally, why you should not give up trusting God, I'll um, run a catalog of the generals of God, those whom the Bible calls, he has, they have a good report with God. In Hebrews 11, verse 1, he says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. So this man had a good report with God. And starting with Noah, he was a drunkard. 120 years it cost him to build the ark. That's enough for anyone to give up and say, I'm done. You know, when Abraham was 100, the Lord appeared to him. He said, it's time for you to have it. He said, Lord, I'm done. I'm done with childbearing. At this age, to start nurturing child. You know, one thing I want to say, when the man that was born blind, they said there's no evil with God. In John chapter 9, there was a man born blind that the Lord opened his eyes. And they asked the Lord, who sinned? This man, his parents, his father, his mother. The Lord said nobody sinned. But for the glory of God to be seen. And the man was about 40 years. And he was allowed to be blind. And I asked the Lord, I said, 40 years of his life is gone. And the Lord asked me, what is it about 40? Is it what the idiom people say, a fool at 40 is a fool forever? He said, that's not in the word. You coined that by yourself. And when you got to 40, you put pressure on yourself that God never put any pressure on you. You are the one that believes by 40, if you have not made it, you are a fool. God didn't say that in his word. Joseph made it at 17. 
David made it at 30. Abraham made it at 100. Moses made it at 80. Find your time. Find your time. For Sarah, it was 90. For Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus, was 15. Was Mary more successful than Sarah? No. Was Sarah more successful than Mary? No. None is not successful than the other. They are both successful. And so, they had a good report with God. But when you look at a catalog of the delays in their lives, and they trusted God, and they laughed, their jaw was full. At age 80, Moses, at 120, he made it in life. And the archives of Moses' success is all, all the nations of, of the world, apart from the Bible, it's in the archives of Egypt there. The records are there. And you say, my friend made at 40, where is this archive? Where is this record with God? It does not exist. And so there is a catalog of people who trusted God and they made it. They had situations that are worse than we're seeing today. Someone gave birth at 60-something and everybody was screaming. I said, that's a shame on the church world of this generation. That if Sarah, God's witness, gave birth at 90 and we're celebrating 60-something. If we're even celebrating 89, I will understand. We, have not, we should cross the glory of this latter rain is greater than the former. We should have women of 92 giving birth. 95, 97, 101, not 69. That's small. That's not a miracle. That's just a normal phenomenon with just ordinary prayer. That's not faith. Praise God. So, there's still a lot for us to achieve and we can only achieve them trusting God. So, Abraham trusted God. He made it with all the challenges. Sarah trusted God. She made it with all the challenges. Joseph trusted God. He made it. Moses trusted God. He made it. The catalog is endless. The Bible says, and others, many whose names were not mentioned. With all the shortcomings of something, he trusted God. He made it. Coming down to our own time, we find men like Abraham Lincoln, the president of the United States, who attempted 13 elections and failed. And he still became the president of the United States. And many more like that. Finally, resting with our brother Job, the man who said, I find hope from the oppressions of a tree, not from the oppressions of Jesus, not from the resurrection that is mind-boggling to heaven and earth and beneath, a tree that anybody can plant. He said, if a tree can grow again, if it has its roots, he said, then if I'm alive, I will make it again with 10 dead children. An entire conglomerate collapsed. And cancer, which is incurable on his body. He said, I have hope that I will rise again. Why? He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. So the source of his hope was that God exists. And God can make water fall on a tree. It will bud again. The night will rise again. And so I want you to trust God no matter what you're facing. Cast all your cares on him. He careth for you. Now, next time I'll be explaining to you what you need to do to trust God so that God himself can take over and be pilot and you will just be like a passenger. He'll be the one flying the plane while you just sit enjoying yourself. Quit flying the plane. You can't navigate. You can't see through the cloud. He has the navigation equipment. Come and sit in the first class and enjoy the ride and let God do the flying. It is a guaranteed flight. It will land safely. And so I'm encouraging people out there, it's time to trust God. Don't hit the lane where the fraudsters and enemies of humanity have taken. A man defrauds people's lifetime savings. He sits and he buys Porsche cars. He's doomed, he's sealed. It's a doomed end. He's not only doomed on earth, he's doomed into eternity. God gives enduring riches and he gives riches without sorrow. And so I'm encouraging you today, come and trust the Lord God Almighty. He is your arm, he's your shield, he's your help, he's your strength. You know the Psalm 23, we always say, 
Say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack anything in this life that I need. Why? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. That's why they say, blessed is the man whom the Lord does not impute. And he will keep you from sinning. He leads me in the path for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which is what everybody is walking in now. It's a valley of the shadow. He said, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table. That's the ultimate now. It's taking you to the banqueting hall. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You've anointed my head, my cup runneth over. That means in the presence of my enemies, your cup is running over. That simply means they can't take out of what has been given to you. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you and I all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 46 says, Trust in the Lord and do not fear. Even if the earth is collapsing and there's a tsunami, it says we will not fear. Even if the earth be removed, and I ask myself, if the earth be removed, where will we stay? He said the Lord will provide the habitation for us if the earth is be removed. Why? He said there is a God. He's our God. He's our Father. He's our hope. He's our source. He's our help. He's our shield. It's our life. He said, we shall not be moved. In that Psalm 46, he went further on to say, even if there are wars, he said, he is capable of destroying the shield, burning the chariots in the fire. And that's what we're going to trust God concerning Nigeria. Nigeria will not go to war. I guarantee there's a shaking coming. But there will be no war. Nigeria will not break up. Why? We're looking up to God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm defining my God. I'm not saying the God of one day. Like, no, no, no. The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus the Christ, the only begotten Son of God, is our source, is our life, is our hope, is our shield, is our maker, is our rock, is our everything. He is mindful of us. He will keep us. He will protect us. He will preserve us. Our life is not to be wasted. No evil will befall us. Even in the midst of the pandemic, we will walk free and upright. It will not touch us. No wonder Psalm 91 says, They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He said they'll be immune from the arrow that fly by day, the pestilence that walk in darkness, the destruction that lay away at noonday, and all this evil. He said a thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. He said it will not come near you. We have seen people who handled COVID-19 cases, nurses, who did not know it was a COVID-19 case, a nurse without protective gear, no gloves, she handled it. The COVID-19 man died. She was tested five times, insulated, as isolated. There was no COVID-19. God kept her. He will keep you in the midst of the pandemic. That's why I guarantee you, our schools will open this year. Write it down. If the federal government have the power, let them go ahead and shut it down. I open it in the name of Jesus. If it is the pandemic, it will open. Why? It will subside. It will go down. And our children will go to schools. I'm not saying they should go right now. They will go later, but they will resume. Not next year. This year, it will subside. And our children will go to school. And they will live in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we thank you. It is well with Nigeria. Nigeria will not go under. It is well with your homes. It is well with your family. It is well with your health. If you're having challenges in your health, I rebuke every form of sickness, diseases, pain, and infirmity plaguing your health. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus the Christ, the only begotten Son of the Most High God. And it is well with your finances. It is well with your career. It is well with your business. It says in lockdown, that business, that target, this year, I prophesy, will be fulfilled. It will not fail. Whether it's locked down or not, whether God will use your business or another business, you will meet your target this year in the name of the Lord Jesus. It is well with all that concerns you. It is well with your sibling. It is well with your parents. It is well with your children. It is well with your husband. It is well with your wife. 
It is well with you and all that concerns you. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information or how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you. Thank you.